Hello, I'm Carl. This is my backyard. Welcome to Carl's Backyard. Here we're looking at the pond. It's a little bit murky, a little bit cloudy, uh, kind of dirty. And honestly, I'm excited about how undirty it is because yesterday we had a little bit of rain. Let me take you back and, and show you the rain yesterday. So I, I don't think I'm going to be potting up plants today after all. We must promise storms have finally arrived. So, yeah, I'm real happy I got the gutters cleaned out yesterday. We got that wood pile cutting down the, and trimming up the tree. We got that pile of wood chipped up. Currently a, currently a stream where the wood pile used to be. It's kind of by design. It's going to run down the water as it runs down the yard. It's going to wash into the edge of the wood pile there. So I'm intentionally sloping it to either side so the water will run around the wood pile instead of just pooling down there. But right now we're getting so much rain that the ground just can't absorb it fast enough. So I've got streams and, and pools of water flowing across the yard. See right here, you see right there. Got an inch deep pool of water just running down the yard. So yeah, does not look like I'm gonna be running out this morning and Lighting up plants after all. The pond's topped back off. It's got probably another inch and a half of water in it since yesterday. It's up to the overflow, so... Should keep it from overflowing the bank. There's an area or two of the bank that's intentionally low. Um, in case the water gets too high, I don't know how you can see the pond past the plant. But yeah, the pond's full. The ground is full, and it's still coming down. It's actually raining harder now than it was before. I don't know how well you can see the pond there. There is a fresh drain that runs around the, the side of the pond, between the pond and the fence, um, to keep the wash from the neighbor's yard. And it's basically flowing straight into the pond. That's the problem I had originally. So I put in a French drain. And then the drain goes down behind the skimmer and under the under the seeding area down there. And then it passes underneath the, the wetland filter and dumps out on the other side of that waterfall. But you can see right now the water has filled in over over the skimmer. Basically, it's breached the water diversion system, um, and I got some some of the clay or water coming off the clay, washing back into the pond, which will settle out in a day or two after it stops draining. It's very frustrating and annoying. Although I tell you, it has taken a lot more rain this year than it usually does. You can see the bottom part of the garden. I don't know how I can see it there. Let me zoom in. That's completely underwater. And I got a little stream of water here flowing from the, the top corner of the yard where the top pond is. And it's literally just a stream of water flowing down and then alongside the pond. Largely pulling up down there. Got a couple areas of the, in the yard where the water is just pulling. But this is an unusual amount of rain. And it's still coming down. So it looks like the pond, pond's been overflown. Overflown? Yeah. Pond's been overflown. Um, so I've got water. You can see if I come back over. See the brown 
uh, it's flowing into the pond, and that's wash coming off the clay that the, the yard is largely made up of. I have to go down an inch or two to hit clay. A couple inches of, of dirt, and then it's just that regular clay that's everywhere. So that's washing into the pond. It's going to turn the pond brown for a couple of days before it settles out. But that's what happens. So here we are after the rain. You can see the pond definitely got some color going on. Um, and that's just discoloration from the clay. It rains so much, so hard, so fast, and so long. Um, the water flowed into the pond, which doesn't normally happen, but it did this time just because there was so much rain. And the ground's already kind of saturated from, from previous rains. And the water ran across the ground, picked up some, some clay sediment, and deposited it here in the pond. And you can see the the pond was overflowing the skimmer, and the overflow drain has, has dropped it down to that point so far. It'll drain it down a little bit more still. The seating area is no longer swamped. The French drain that's running along the back of it um, under the tiles works. And you can see this will clear up here in a day or two. It says the, the skimmers and the filters and everything run. If I come up the stream here a little bit, you can see, for example, that rock there. It's already kind of got a layer of uh, that clay sediment on it. In a couple of days, once the once the water on the pond has settled back down and it's cleared up, I'll come through and rinse off the stream with a with just a hose. Rinse the sediment, you can see it's collecting there too. I don't know how well you can see it, but there's sediment on the on the bottom of the stream. It's collecting and settling out as it runs down the stream. Reassuringly, one, my lily survived. The water bloom, the water lilies bloom, survived. It's a little a little hype right now in the water, but it's still alive and doing good. The cool thing is, if you come over here to the top stream, to the bottom stream, stream coming out, water coming out of the wetland filter, it's still fairly clear. It's a good thing, it means that the filters are all working the way they're supposed to. I'm pumping the wetland filter, the water's being pumped from the bottom up and just, just up through the gravel and everything in the wetland filter. There's about a foot of gravel that the water has to travel up through in the wetland filter, and that catches a lot of sediment. Also in the pond itself, the bottom of the pond, there's about six inches of gravel sitting on top of a, a suction grid. There's a bunch of PVC pipes with holes drilled in them. It covers the entire bottom of the pond uh, with a pump attached to the end. And so all the water gets pulled down through six inches of gravel at the bottom of the pond, pumped up to the wetland filter where it passes through another foot of gravel. And that does an awesome job of cleaning the water. And so the thing about rain is that it tends to be nitrogen rich, especially when it's coming out of a thunderstorm. It's because the, the electricity is static, but whatever in the air tends to cause nitrogen molecules to bond to the water molecules. And so it's, it's nitrified water that's, that's falling as rain. And of course that rain all lands in the pond. And there's a lot, excess amount of nitrogen suddenly dumped in the pond. Which is basically algae food. That's also plant food, but the algae loves it too. And so in order to prevent an algae bloom, or just a, a scummy bloom in the pond, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to add some of this beneficial bacteria. Let's see, where is it? See if we can focus on that. And this beneficial bacteria, and it is just a, a powdered, powdered powder. It's a powder. Let me see. Looks like that. I'm just going to add it here in the stream. Uh, the bacteria, the beneficial bacteria, the nitri nitrifying bacteria, the nitrosomes, um, need the gravel, need gravel and whatnot to live on. They live on surfaces. They don't live free floating. 
And so I'm gonna put two scoops up here in the stream. And of course, some of it's gonna wash, wash down, it'll wash down into the pond. Um, but some of it'll stay on the gravel in the stream the water flows over. So that'll help help the stream um, populate with, with, with beneficial bacteria. Of course, it, it, it does drift down into the, into the pond and populates the gravel and rocks and all that in the pond as well, pretty much any surface. I put it in the stream because the water's flowing there, so I know it's going to get good circulation. I'm going to come over here to the wetland and add another couple of scoops to the wetland. And this is my little water mosaic plant there. I'm not sure if it's doing good or not. When I got it, it was, it was one little medallion. Um, on a long rooty stem that pretty much just planted that and since then the medall medallions spread out which is what they do as they get older and well, there's less water flow but you can see that the water is moving I don't know if you can actually see that or not in case you're wondering these two pipes here and I went over mentioned briefly in the last video that I'm pulling water from the bottom of the pond through six inches of gravel and I'm pumping it back up through the gravel here, about a foot of gravel here. Um, and you may or may not be wondering, if you just pull all that water through the gravel at the bottom of the pond, doesn't the nitrifying bacteria use up pretty much all the oxygen? And so it's oxygen poor water when you're pumping it back up through the, through the wetland. And what these two tubes here are, I got a pair of Venturi teas um, that the water comes through coming back into the wetland. Um, the Venturi tea suck in air. And so those are basically the air inlets for the Venturi teas. As the water passes through, it draws in air, mixes air back in with the water. So it re-oxygenates re the water just before it gets pumped out into the, into the wetland. And the pipes do run the whole length of the wetland uh, with holes drilled in them. So there's no single source that the water is coming through. So the water is encouraged to go through as much gravel as possible um, so that bacteria that's on the gravel can break down the nitrifying wastes and the nitrogenous wastes as well as doing some mechanical filtering, filtering out the silts and, and whatnot. You can see that there, there is some silt, some, some sediment in the um, top of the biological, or the top of the, the wetland, a little, little pull of it there. A couple of little pools or areas where sediment tends to collect, and that's perfectly fine and perfectly normal. We had some rain again last night. So you see water drops on everything, and the sun's just just thinking about coming out from behind some clouds. But yeah, yesterday the the storm apparently the rainstorm. Here in town, I saw on the news it lasted for about an hour and a half and dumped about an inch and a half of rain. Um, but most of that rain, about an inch of it, came down in a 20 minute time span, which is why the, the poor pond was unable to, to keep up with the keep up with the rain flow or the rainfall and, and overflowed a little bit there. But as you can see, it's largely cleared up, I don't know, from this angle with the glare and everything. You can see, but <laughs> Trust me, it's it's cleared up a, a lot um, since yesterday afternoon, and it's just going to continue to get clear um, tonight, tomorrow morning. It'll probably be back to as clear as it normally was. 